Okay, so we've made it to the first exam. And so I'm making this video to kind of give you an idea of how exams are done in my class. Now this applies to not just midterms, but it also applies to finals. All my exams are in the same format. First of all, these exams all consist of five short essay questions, and you have to answer all five of them, right? You can't just pick one because each one of these questions are worth 40 points a piece, right? So five times 40, that's 200, a 200 point quiz. Right? That is 20% of your grade, so it's very important that you uh, do well on these. Okay, You receive these questions one week in advance, Right, so the questions will be posted and the uh, exams due seven days later. And the reason why I do that is that my expectation is that you're going to put some thought into this. You know, This is where I really am going to be measuring your ability to analyze this information, make use of it and stuff. And so you need to have some time. You can't just sit there and try and do it at the spur of the moment in a classroom environment or anything like that, or even it was online, like, you know, start it that morning and have it submitted that evening. That doesn't do any good. You need time to, to really think these out if you're going to do well. Okay, so let's see how this all breaks down. As I mentioned before, five questions, 40 points each. Now, that 40 points is broken down into four segments. There's four criteria in which you're graded on. So each criteria, of course, is worth 10 points, up to 10 points. Uh, this is how it works. First criteria, format. All right. In the instructions, you'll see I have very specific formats that I want you to follow for these uh, short answers. Right. Uh, Times New Roman, 12 point font, double spaced, one inch margins, minimum one page. Do yourself a favor. Make sure that you always bleed over into a second page, because if it doesn't quite look like you've hit that one inch margin on the bottom of the page, I will not give you credit for a full page. OK. My expectation is that since you have a week with this question, you should be able to write more than one page for your answer. Okay, you've had enough time to think about it. Okay, uh, grammar, no, I don't grade grammar, right? If you're using outside sources, should you do citation? No, I don't do citation. Again, each question needs to start on its own page though. So if you do bleed over into the next page, you need to make sure that you do a page break before you start the next question. If you're doing this in Google Docs or doing it on an Apple and converting it to a PDF or whatever for submission, make sure that your page breaks put themselves where they were supposed to be so that you don't get docked for having two questions on the same page. OK. All right. Format is 25 percent of the total grade, right, for each question. Easiest 25 percent you'll get on this test. So definitely make sure you just follow the rules for formatting and length so that you get those points. Pretty simple. All right. The second segment is historical background. Basically, you need to demonstrate that you understand the historical context of the question that's been asked of you, right? The questions vary, right? So I'm not going to go too crazy into trying to give you examples of that, right? But you need to be able to demonstrate some form of historical context of it, which means you do need to provide some kind of background, right? Your best source for that, of course, is your lecture notes, right? Or your lecture videos, depending on whether or not it's an online class or not and uh, of course your textbook, right? Now, since you have a whole week, you can use the internet, right? But I'm gonna warn you right now, if you use the internet, first of all, be careful what websites you use. I highly suggest going .org or .edu, stay away from .coms, even history.com, it can be problematic, okay? Stick with something that you know is a little bit more reliable, because if you write something really weird that you got from some weird website, I'm probably gonna call you on it, okay? Now, you don't have to do citations, but, you know, you might help you to say, well, um, I'll just throw history.com says, comma, and then talk about it, right? Uh, but um, like I said, for the most part, your lecture notes and your textbook should give you the answers to as far as getting your background done on these questions, no problem. All right, again, up to wor worth up to 10 points for that. Next, your analysis, right? Your analysis of the question. The question is asking you, it's asking you to, to give your input on it, right? To take that information and synthesize it, exercise your critical thinking skills, right? The questions, again, like I said, the, the, the format of them varies. So just based on, you got to base it on the question at hand, right? And so you got to be able to demonstrate your ability to analyze, a, analyze it. That's worth up to 10 points. And then the final part, the fourth part, right, is support, all right? Basically, this part should be simple. You're doing analysis, which means you're making statements. Do not make any statement without backing it up with proof, period. That is your support. Any statement you say, do not assume that I know what you're talking about. Assume that you are writing this to somebody that has no idea about the subject. 
because you need to convince me that you have an idea about the subject, right? And so make sure that every statement you make, you back it up with support, back it up with proof. And that breaks down the four criteria, format, background, analysis, support. Each word 10 points each, up to 40 points, times five, a 200 point test, right? Should be pretty simple, pretty straightforward. After you have this all typed up and ready to go, you'll save it as either a PDF, a .doc, or .docx file, because that's the only three formats that it will accept. Do not try and link a Google Doc to the assignment. It will not work. If you do manage to get it to just transfer in there, it's going to mess up your formatting and you're going to lose points. Save it as a standalone file in one of those three formats so that when you open your assignment, you can go to the portal there and find the spot where it says for you to upload your file, upload it through there, and it's going to run it through whatever plagiarism checker there, that, that, uh, that it, it runs through. And, uh, and then it'll submit, it'll release a report, and then I will be able to grade it, okay? So just a couple last pieces of advice here. If you do use websites, which I'm sure some of you do to do research, some of you have been trying to use Google to do your quiz questions, you keep getting burned for doing that, okay? Um, do not copy and paste from a website, period. If anything comes back to me, copy, copied and pasted from a website, even if it's just one sentence, you will receive a zero on that question. I will not grade it. It'll just get a zero, and I'll move on. As far as I'm concerned, you plagiarize that one, and you don't get credit for it, okay? The only thing that should ever be word for word on anything is if you're quoting somebody. If you are talking about Martin Luther King's I Had a Dream speech and you take a quote from the speech, yes, that could be word for word, right? If you're using websites to help you come up with answers, do yourself a favor. Grab yourself a notepad and take notes on that notepad with little bullet points as you're going over the website saying, okay, this might be useful, whatever. And then when you actually write out your answers, Use the notes, don't use the website, so that you can put things in your own words. They have to be in your words in order for you to get credit for it. Except for, like I said, quoting some significant figure, you know. Um, all right, so that's about it. Once you get that done, you get that submitted, that's, uh, you know, that's one of your major exams, right? 20%, each exam for 20%. So in my typical class, 40% of your grade is reliant on you doing really well on these. So make sure that you stay focused. Don't be afraid to email me when you have questions, and good luck, and uh, we'll talk.